Hi YouTube and welcome to episode number seven of everything you need to know about tarantulas, keeping tarantulas, raising tarantulas, whatever I got it right as. Um, we're going to start out with the Ace of Money update. Here is the baby Ace of Money. Still haven't molted out yet. Still alive and well, all huddled together. Y'all can see all kinds of little shells and stuff in there. Alright, I am going to feed. Can you open that, P. Metallica? A lot of people said, I read a report I wrote. I love these fresh shed roaches, by the way. A lot of people said in a report I wrote that, or somebody wrote, that Phocelotherias cannot eat dubias because it will cause something. Impaction and stuff. I don't really believe that. Here's my P. Metallica. If she's hungry, she'll eat this. And if she's not, if she ain't acting like she's hungry, get this one instead. We'll go with this one here. This is an interesting spider here. This is a Phocelotheria hannibalis amica, and it is resting its abdomen on its leg. Dude, it's hungry. Hungry to come out of there. Whoa, it didn't. It's right here. Look at it right here. Look at all that yellow. Oh my god. It's after that. It's after that. Here we go. It's going to be from the tongs. Yep, right out of the tongs, people. Boom! I am looking for a mature male for this. That's the reason I'm showing that. So, if anybody's got a mature male, post it there, you know, Hannah Amica, or a mature male. Goody Tarantula, I would rather buy it outright or trade you for it outright because I don't want a 50-50. That's just me because I need more of both of those species in my collection and I'm going to raise them. So, now we've covered this. Sarah's going to be handing stuff to me and putting stuff back. So, I'm going to try to cover as much stuff as I can for you guys. Andrew, what's up, Andrew? What's up, my new friend? New friend? Thought we were old timers by now. All right, so this is what a baby ate some money looks like. And you can't feed them at this point. They're not eating right now. Um, and I do not like sending tarantulas to people that are not eating yet. So they have to have their first meals and stuff before they get out to those of you who got the freebies before. Here, baby, if you can put them up for me. All right, now we are going to go over some things about feeding and watering. I got this needle thing I got from Tarantula Life Alive. It's absolutely amazing. You can direct the water exactly where you need it. I love this. This is a Brachiopoma classy. I absolutely love this species. Um, they get substrate in their water, as you see. This is a dry species. When you're getting a tarantula, you need to know what its environment requires. If it requires more humidity, less humidity. As you notice, most Brachiopelma species require dry substrate with a wet corner. And I put this little tattoo cup for a water bowl in there because I absolutely love that. As far as feeding goes, we got different size food stuff for each one. I got these little bitty rusty reds because I have easy access to them. Um, I have plenty of them. Now, for those of you who don't, if you stay tuned for episode 8, you see that? There's a shablam. I'm not going to say bam because that's what Rob C says, but I, my new one's going to be like shablam. What do y'all think about shablam? i gotta, I got to be original. <laughs> or shaboom. <laughs> All right, here goes another B classy. This is number one. We have three of them, and I like feeding them what they need. So here is B classy number one. Now, if you see that response there, I was kind of expecting that response. It's because they're in pre molt. You see how it's not acting at all? It's not because it's not alive. It is alive. Watch. It's just not hungry. It'll ignore food. You want to immediately pull your food out of there 
put some a little extra humidity in there. They're fixing to molt, and if they molt and it reaches in there, no matter how small or big, or any feeder item, they will eat the tarantula. Because despite popular belief, it is an everything eat everything world, people. All right, now here is number five. This one I sexed already. It is a female. It is molted recently. I'm going to take a bigger roach like this, mash it where it's damaged, and drop it. So it's a bigger meal. And you might see the tarantula go after it or not. It just depends, but I know this one molted a couple days ago, so I'm going to leave this food thing in here with it because I know it's out of the danger zone with the roach attacks the tarantula, the tarantula will kill the roach. Can you put these over there for me, sweetheart? Mm -hmm. That was Brachiopoma class classy. Absolutely amazing species. Now we're going to go to another one, favorite of mine. These are Ceratogrius darlinga. What's up, Magnus? Sorry, we got a uh, backstage pass going on here for uh, my uh, fan my fan page. We go to uh, Badass Reptiles and Inverts and pass the questions. Then you're accepted into the group. You get backstage passes and stuff from time to time. And a whole new world of total awesome. Lots of cool people. Very helpful. No trauma, drama, and baby mama. We have a molt here. Sometimes you'll find a molt. See this? I'm going to remove this molt because I'm going to sex it. I have videos up about how to sex a molt. I'm going to put each one of them on individual lids because I'm going to sex them and see what it is. We need bigger roaches. Give me that bigger roaches over there. Yes, I'm fixing to waste my baby roaches on baby tarantulas. Give me a moment, people. You're going to see something really cool. Well, these ones need to be mashed hard. And you're going to see something happen here. Mash hard. Well, I'm going to leave that in there because that Darlinga is more than capable of getting that. I'll put a little water spot in here. Right on the web, which you can do. What number is that? This is, I'm leaving the molt right there. It's number four. I'm going to put each one of them. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you all the purple ray. It was out a while ago. It's not now. This is a purple pink toe. Uh, named Beast. Sarah's awesome spider. Wait, wait, I don't want these moved. I got it right there. I don't want them moved. I really don't want them moved because I, if, if you blow, it's going to mess up. Just leave it yeah, over here. Yeah, but I have this. Just leave it over here. I want to leave it over here. All right. Here is number two. Ceratogrius darlinga. Also molted. I'm very particular about my molts because when I get them, I want to sex them, and they're they're at a proper size where I can sex them, and I have to know because I have other females that are going to be getting fed. I don't know where this one is, but when they sense something's up there, maybe they'll come out and y'all get a kill. Look, you see how uh, webbing is waterproof too. You notice how that just stayed there. Look, the spider just came out and said hello to all my friends. You don't know the roaches right here, but it will here in a moment. If it don't, one of them will. I damaged it. There we go. Watch it. Keep watching, people. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Get that camera so they can see what's going on. Backstage pass is no good if they can't see. Keep watching. The roach don't move. There you go. There you go. It's not the greatest view in the world because of the way the camera was set up, but the next one will be better. And this one's already out here. That one is molted as well. Keep watching. I'm going to show you all some killer takedowns here in a moment. Just bear with me. Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put a little bit of water here on this stuff. This species likes to be dry with a wet spot in the corner. It's this one's a little bit bigger. 
I can feed it a better food and stuff. A roach's brain is in its back, so if you bust the brain, it makes the roach where it can't hurt nothing, and there you go. Y'all see that killer takedown? Um, they say a cockroach can live nine days without, I mean, nine days with its uh, head cut off, and the reason for that is because it dies of starvation because its brain is still alive. You can take a needle and stick it in a roach's back, and it'll completely disable the roach because that's how. That's this memory chip or whatever. Alright, now we'll go to this one. This is the last darling guy I have, other than the two gravid females. And this one's fairly big. We're going to drop it here. Are y'all watching? Get ready. All four molted. Out of these four, I'm guessing, just by looking at the spiders themselves and been doing this so long. Males are more leggier, and about eight times out of ten times, me guessing, I get it correct uh, if it's a male or a female. And I think two of these are males and two of them are females. You can check my later videos, and I will be revealing what their sex is, or you'll see it on there when I pan across it. So those four are there. Are there? All right. Then we got this one. I can't really pronounce this name. This is new tarantula. This is a soma po. Samapoeus ecliasticus, I think. If I'm saying that properly or not, I don't know. The camera won't zoom it in for some reason. But here's the little tarantula, and I'm going to feed it a little roach because it's a little tarantula. It's like a Samapoeus armenia, but same genus, but different. I don't know if you can see or not. Let me see. Yep, right out of the tongues. Y'all see that? Shabalam! <laughs> so, that's that one. Alright. Now, I also have for sale Brachiopelma vegans, tarantulas. And they're about this size now, give or take. Just a fraction. I have about. 45 or 50 of these available. Any of y'all want a Brachiopelma vegans? I highly recommend that as a first uh, first time spider. I love them. I've always loved them. This is absolutely too big for that to eat. Matter of fact, I want to go over something. Where's the scissors at? Um, right there. The scissor. Oh yeah, I want to show y'all how I do this. Sometimes I would just take a damaged roach and cut it. I'm going to go over this farther in another video and just leave that little piece of roach in there and it will eat it. You can always wash your hands later or use gloves. Carry on. Um, carry on. Little baby tarantulas do eat carry on. Maybe you'll see one of them eat carry on. And uh, there's nothing else that needs to be done because they do that in the wild naturally. They find little carry-on items. And when you have very, very small tarantulas, I'll go over that later. You gotta improvise. If you don't have a very small roach like I was showing you earlier, then you improvise. Now I have a little small roaches in here I'll show you so I can get a tack out of him. But if you don't have them and you have very small tarantulas to feed, it's always best to, and this is a little bit too wet for a uh, Brachiopelma vegans. So when you have an issue like that, and something comes up like that, you can always, whoops, change your situation. I got a little needle thing I set up by poking some more holes in your container. You don't need very many, just a few. And it will let a little bit more moisture in, or uh, out of the top and then you will have to monitor it so you can get it dry on brachiopelmas on and then one side have a spot of uh one side have a spot of wet that's the way they like it uh-huh uh-huh and there you go another awesome hit 
These ones I put to the side because they're bigger and I believe they're possible males just because they're growing faster than all the other ones. I won't know until I get another molt off of them. Also, this one's also a little bit too wet. So, we're going to do another thing. Boy roaches. Boy roaches have wings. These rusty red, y'all see the wings? So, we're going to do something else I want to show y'all. When you cut a roach in half, if it's like this, you're going to have to mash the head. If you don't mash the head, you don't mash the head and you're feeding a baby sling, it will run around and break your sling up in little pieces. You don't want that, so I'm cutting bigger roaches piece, dropping them there for carry on. You got to do what you got to do when uh, little baby spiders are involved. And that abdomen on that roach is pulsating, so that will be enough to lure that tarantula out to eat it. I don't worry about it at all. And it's very important that you want to take that out of your enclosure within three days. And it should have a little bit of mold started to grow on it, but it'll pick up because the spider will have it webbed. You see that? Even with the mashed head, how dangerous this roach can be to a small sling. So if you see it like that, you want to damage it furthermore. And just drop it in there. And it's acting like it wants to get it. And it will get it anyway. Y'all can uh, take my word for it. I know I've already pre poked holes in this because it was too big. We'll put just a little rich in here for this guy. If he wants it, he'll get it. If he don't, he won't. Um, I'm going to feed some bigger tarantulas for you guys and just show you a uh, species. Different species. Here is a Brachypelma amelia. Absolutely DEA beautiful. I love this species. This is a male Brachypelma amelia. I feed my male slower than the females if I don't have a female to go with it because I don't want to lose it. And this tarantula is picky. For some reason, he does not like a male roach. So, I'm going to give him a female roach. Some of them are just like that. I don't know why, they're just they're like that. So he's got a female. And he's kicking hair, so I'm guessing he's in pre -molt. We're not going to feed that one. But at least you get to see how beautiful it is. Now we're going to go to... What's the on there? Let me be so reading that. Finish my bracket film collection. I do too, Magnus. I had a few months in the past two weeks. That's awesome. At this rate, we're getting about 25 to 30 molts a day. All right, here is a Acanthoscuria geniculata. Another awesome tarantula I love. And you can just keep packing them in there and packing them in there and packing them in there and they'll just keep packing their mouth slap full over and over and over. Something I love about this species. Absolutely amazing. This is also a male. Now I'm looking for a female Acanthoscuria genic ulata. If I can get one. Which I can, but I would prefer an adult female. Preferably about two, two to three years old would be great. I think that's called the Brazilian Red. Is a common name. If I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken there. Don't quote me on that. I don't like common names because things get mixed up too easily, and I don't like that at all. Okay, here is the. Tr I'm gonna bring this one back around here to show you guys. I told you he was gonna get that roach. That is the uh, C. Darlinga number five that we fed earlier. It's eating the hell out of that roach. Here is my son's tarantula, one of them. And uh, this is a Brachypelma albopilosum. Known as a Nicaraguan curly hair. They also have a hobby form, which is the Honduran. Another species that you can also just keep packing food and packing food and packing food. And they will keep on eating it and eating it. Just watch and see, people. This is one of my favorite species. I did have these up for sale at one point. I've only got about 16 or 15 or 40. How many I got left? Oh wait, anywhere from 12 to 15 left myself. Okay, 12 left myself, so I have none for sale. 
sorry if y'all missed out on those but them are my future breeding stock and you see how they just keep getting them and getting them and getting them but if you want a spider similar to this that will not have curly hair but will have long hair and a very fiery red like my red head rump almost the same color then the Berechia pelma vegans is the tarantula for you this one will always be a favorite of mine if you notice the blonde coloration of the hair this is a Nicaraguan color form or true form the Honduran form is uh, I guess the bloodline got muddied somehow maybe with a B vegans or something else and it's changed the color to a darker color also a very loved spider though they've been in the hobby forever and they've been loved forever so there's no sense in somebody start hating on them because they're not a true form since the true form was just recently known about to me anyway I don't know but uh keeping these bloodlines true so that's that one and then you have a problem tarantula like sometimes this is an Apona Pelma Moderatum a very awesome tarantula I don't know if y'all can see it or not it's in the bottom here it's smaller than any tarantula I've got it's a year old and it's molted about 25 times and never gained much of any size to it at all which is ridiculous. I don't know what exactly to say about that. It's a spider that likes it dry. It's a desert species. Highly sought after species. And very expensive when they're bigger. And I know why. Because it takes forever for them to grow. So I'm going to take a few smaller roaches and put in here with him. Or her. I've never sexed it. It's too small to tell. But it's big enough to eat that. I'm not going to put a bunch of them in there because I don't want nothing to happen to the spider. So I'll put about three in here. Or four. Three or four in there will be fine. And that will be that. And I'm going to cut with that because this is a very long video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace, love, and happiness and all that good shit. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, share my videos, watch my older videos while you wait for new ones. And most of all, people be yourself. Because yourself is cute. And don't forget to check out Badass Reptiles and Inverts. Pass the questions and you will be good. And who was the last thing for? Um, outdoor state. Outdoor state. I brought the big guy out just for you. This is Jabba the Hutt. He is bigger than a football. He weighs about seven pounds, eight pounds, somewhere in there. That varies sometimes depending on what he eats. He is alive and well and big as hell. Edward Tindall, Sarah Tindall, and big ass frog Tindall out. Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt. But tonight he's a big ass frog tindle.